So what's going on guys, it's Triple G here, back with another Wonderlands video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about my Berserker Stabomancer build. This build can be a melee build, it can be a boss dealing build, it can keep your action skill up as long as you want to. It has the best animations for action skills in the game in my opinion. So if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel or join us over on Twitch, we stream five times a week and otherwise, let's get straight into this video. So let's jump straight into the skill tree first and we'll start off with the Berserker skill tree. So the Berserker skill tree is all about frost and it's all about melee and we're going to lean into that heavily in order to get those debuffs for when we talk about our secondary class. So the action skill we're actually going to use is actually going to be on the second class so we're not going to be taking a action skill here. We're going to be putting five points into frost damage straight away um because we're going to be dealing a ton of frost damage we're then going to be putting five points into the melee damage because we are going to be using our melee quite a lot and then we're going to put three points into unyielding which is going to give us a little bit of health regeneration we don't actually have a lot of health regen in this build so this just being here is actually quite nice then we're going to put five points into the old ways this will mean that we will do a bonus of 30 percent damage when we are very close to an enemy and we will also get 30 percent damage reduction we are going to be meleeing people at times and getting up close and personal one of the really strong things about this build is you can play it in multiple different ways and i'll show you that in the footage a little bit later then we're going to take an icebreaker which means that we're going to gain increased damage against those that are slowed and we're going to be slowing and freezing people all the time then we're going to have a movement speed buff as well which is really really nice and synergizes with some of the skills that we're going to look at later we're going to put a single point into relentless rage here so we can deal damage and keep ourselves up in fight for your life when needed now we are going to be up close and personal so there are going to be times where you're going to go into fight for your life so this comes in really handy so the final thing that we're going to do and it is the most important thing with this build is the capstone blood of the fallen which is a kill skill. The Fate Maker's remaining action skill cooldown is reduced by a percentage. If his action skill is currently active, it restores a percentage of its duration. This is going to give us the unlimited action skill while it's up and also will give us a ton of action skill cooldown while we're getting kills while the action skill is on cooldown. Then we're going to move over to the Stabomancer's secondary skill and we're actually going to be using Ghost Blade here. Now, just while we talk about action skills, you can use any of the action skills here and it be effective. You can go around and spin and you can slam, but the Ghost Blade is the most consistent for putting out good damage and you can get a lot of enemies and keep your action skill up for the longest period of time. So we're going to put four points into Arsenal here. Now, these four points are going into melee damage, spell damage and gun damage, giving us 12% respectively. Then we're going to have melee attack speed, which is really, really good for the playstyle that we're going to want to use. Then we're going to put five points into swift death, which is basically a percentage damage based on our speed, which is very similar to what Zane did. We're then going to put three points into follow up. Now, follow up is really, really good and important for this build, particularly if you want to use this build as a melee build. So whenever the fate maker deals gun damage to an enemy, it will grant a stack basically then it will get up to 10 stacks dealing extra damage and then when you punch something it will consume all those stacks and those melee stacks if you will are getting buffed by your overall melee damage so it really works well with this build then we've got elusive which is basically means you can shoot and sprint which leans into our movement speed buff when we get more damage finally we're going to have two points then into critical hit damage increased as well if we had more points we'd be throwing more in here but that's all we have right now in terms of the hero stats obviously we're going to be throwing a lot into crit damage and a lot into crit chance because this is stabomancer now there are other ways to play it so having these in crit damage and crit chance just works really really well and then the final points we put into attunement which is for action skill cooldown obviously there are ways for us to get action skill cooldown a bit faster with this build but I just felt like it was a little bit better for this build because I wasn't really using spells, so I didn't really need spell cooldown. Status effect is a non-starter for this build and we weren't really dying that much, so max HP and ward didn't really work. So in terms of weapons for this build, you can kind of use whatever you want, but here's some of the favorites that I found so far playing the game. 
an absolutely essential piece to this build in my opinion is this goblin pickaxe of blistering you can get this in a video that i have shown on my channel so make sure you check that out but essentially this is a very very strong melee item it also comes in frost which really synergizes well with the build and will give you a ton of gold at the same time the favorite gun I like to use is actually this shotgun, the crossblade of striking. It does a cross projectile, does both poison and the dark magic damage. So it works really, really well. And I also have this Hequator of the Hurricane, which I like to use as well for getting up those stacks before I melee people. There is also a video on the channel about this one. Then you can kind of mix in kind of what you want to lean into the most into the passives here. So if you want more melee crit, more melee damage, more ability damage, if you want the ghost blade to be doing more ability damage, the actual class mod that I went to was this one. So it has more berserker power. It's not perfect in any way, shape or form, but this one I found had 25% ability damage boosting up our ghost blade. And this 15% dot damage explosion chance is really, really nice and does poison damage well, which is really nice with the shotgun. Um, that we talked about earlier in terms of spells you can use absolutely what you want i don't really use spells with this build so it's nice a frost spell would be really nice to help synergize and make enemies slow which will give you more damage but again it's completely up to you your personal preference so the play style for this build is really simple if you're going to use the berserkers action skills you're going to want to get up close and personal and punch things so utilize frost and get up there because you get more damage However, my personal favorite is the Stabomancer and the Ghost Blade because you can use that from any distance and it's really good for those tricky flying enemies as well because it will just home in exactly where you put it and deal with them really, really quickly. I'll be completely honest with you. I didn't really use From the Shadows that much with this build, although it's still a very good skill. It just didn't kind of synergize with what I was wanting to do. Guys, that's it for today's video. If you have enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel or join us over on Twitch. We stream five times a week and otherwise I'll catch you on the flip.